Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2 and I'm out here in the garage for another Garage Gun Talk. And I've been hoping to film some content today. In fact, I have everything set up to film the garage portion of the range report on the FNX 45 Tactical. But I don't know if you can hear in the background, it's raining. I have the garage door up right now, but it's been raining and uh, thundering all morning. And I have today off, and I was hoping to make a bunch of videos, but the weather has not been cooperating. And that's one of the things about filming in your garage. So if it's really noisy, loud outside, you just can't get stuff done. And it's kind of dying down now, but they say there's more coming. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it done. And uh, I know that my wife's coming home from work, so she'll be coming through the garage and opening our gate and all that kind of stuff. So right now, all the filming's on pause. But... I did want to talk about a couple things today. One is a gun that I, I guess I'll tell you that I bought. Uh oh. And then the other one is uh, dealing with the Supreme Court and actually giving kudos to some people that normally I would not uh, celebrate. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. So you guys know I have not bought a gun in, geez, going on, I think, four or five months now. But today, that all changed. Obviously, because of the rain, I had nothing else to do. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go down to uh, Cabela's, which is like a big box store here. Uh, I know they're around the country. I don't know how many. Uh, they're associated with like Bass Pro Shops. Anyway, I actually have a uh, like a Bass Pro Shops Cabela's like credit card that I use for everything. And I just pay it off at the end of the month. And these points accrue. And so I had like $500 in points. And then I had a couple of gift cards that were given to me by students and things for like Christmas and like Teacher Appreciation Week and so forth. And so I had all this kind of stuff, you know, I was like, you know, I need to go out to the store and see what I could find. And I really thought I was going to go there and look at Trijicon RMRs because I need one for the top of my scope on my personal kind of Mark 18 uh, inspired build. Not my clones, but I think I've shown that rifle off in other videos. And I got down there, and for some reason, they didn't have any Trijicons at all. I mean, nothing was in stock. So I started looking at the guns, and there was a couple things that kind of interested me. And I wasn't there to spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I was trying to be responsible after all. And so anyway, I was going through uh, the stuff that they have, and normally they don't have a lot of, I don't say, stuff that I'm interested in, because... As you go through your gun collecting journey, you know, you start off and you buy, a, you know, cheap guns in the beginning. You know, I had, I think my first gun that I kind of bought myself through an FFL that wasn't through like a private transfer was a Glock 17 Gen 3. And uh, that was probably about, what, a $400 gun, $500 gun at the time, which is a lot of money for me 15 years ago. And then, you know, you're, you you want to build up your collection. And so, you know, you buy $300 guns and $400 guns. And then, then, then eventually that doesn't do it for you. You know, you got to go up to like the $800 guns and then $1,000 guns. And eventually, when you get to the point that I'm at where I've shot so many guns and my collection has grown to what it is, the only things that really like tickle my fancy typically are the things in the $3,000 and plus and more range, you know. And I'm not in the mood to spend that because you guys know I'm going through my midlife crisis and saving up for a Rolex. But there are a few guns in the cheaper price points that I still am interested in. And this was one of them. They actually had one in stock. And uh, it's a Beretta 80X Cheetah. And when these things hit, uh, hit the market, what, about a year ago or something? I know there was like a special edition version that was like, fourteen hundred dollars and then everyone else wanted like a thousand dollars for these things. I was like, there is no way I am paying a thousand dollars for a three eighty double stack. Even though it's a I'm not doing that. That is absolutely bonkers. The prices have finally kind of settled down and I wanna say like the MSRP on these is like seven fifty or something. And occasionally you can see them for a little bit less than that and um, the like. But I was down there and uh, out of all the guns that were kind of in this price point that interested me this is one they had in stock. And I'm like, you know what? I've been wanting to get one. I have the 84 FS. And this would be a great addition to my Beretta collection. I think it's a cool gun. And with the points I had on my credit card and the gift cards, I got out of the store with this gun for less than $290. A little bit less than $290. So it's like a 750 gun. 
And that's what I decided to go home with today. So I actually bought a gun. I haven't done this in a long time. So it's kind of a experience for me because, you know, it, it, it's the excitement of getting a new gun that I haven't had in a while. So let me show it to you here. I think you guys all know what the Beretta ADX is. Uh, 380 double stack kind of modernization of the 80 series in 380. Uh, this one is made in Italy. I think all the ADXs are made in Italy. Hammer fired. A couple of nice upgrades over the 84 and 85 FS is you do have the pick rail in the front and you have a nicer hammer, I think. It is optics ready, so you do have a plate on the top. And one of the nicest additions, or I should say really subtractions, is the fact that even though the magazine can be out of the gun, you can still fire it. And that magazine safety disconnect in some of the older and the older Berettas kind of ruined the trigger. And this thing feels pretty darn nice. So I bought a Beretta ADX for myself today. So that was my treat. And I think because of the deal I got it for, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy. So I'm not going to complain. And uh, I'll probably end up reviewing this kind of side by side with my 84 FS. Now, I don't know if they changed anything. I remember my friend David had one of the more expensive ones when they first came out. And he was going to let me review it. And I had it here on, on the workbench. And I was very surprised by how cheap it felt. Like, it just felt like a cheap gun. I, I think I remember the trigger being plastic and a couple other things. The, the trigger in this one is metal. So they've upgraded that. And this one feels better to me uh, than that one did. So maybe they've changed a few things. But, yeah, this was kind of a hot seller. When they first came out, everyone wanted one. And I knew if I was patient, I'd be able to get one and snag one at, at a good price. And then with all the credit card points I had it just it was just the right time so I bought it it was either between this and I guess Glock has released something I didn't know they had released the Glock 17 classic which is essentially the gen 1 Glocks now I have one of the p80s the limited edition ones but I didn't know they had put into production the gen 1 Glock 17s again and I always got one of those but I decided to go with this one. This is the more expensive of the ones. I already have enough Glocks, you know. So I was like, you know, this is something different, cool, tacty cool, but uh, interesting. So anyway, that's what I got. Just got it home. So I'll probably end up just kind of cleaning this up. Go put it in the safe and figure out a time to review it sometime in the future. So anyway, that's all that I got when it comes to, like, the new gun news. Uh, you guys don't see me <laughs> buy new guns that often. So, I mean, yeah, it's another gun, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so let's talk about a couple things uh, when it comes to politics that I wanted to uh, mention today. The Supreme Court today issued a ruling, and it kind of surprised me. It's the case that deals with the NRA, and it's not really a Second Amendment case. It's a First Amendment case regarding the NRA's ability um, to say what they want and essentially not be punished for political ideas. And it all stems from their offering of carry insurance in New York State. And we all know that New York State politicians are all against guns. And for some reason, even though the NRA is ineffectual and irrelevant for most gun owners, they still look at the NRA as like the big boogeymen of the gun world. And so they use their political power and trying to play, you know, legal games to try to get them shut down, to find them, and so forth. And the Supreme Court uh, decided to take on this case that the lower courts had dismissed. Essentially, they sided with the state of New York. And we could all look at this case and go, it's a, it's a case where people in political power are using their political influence to go after people that they disagree with, even though that what they're doing is not against the law. Well, the Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, backed the NRA. Unanimous. That means both the liberals and the conservatives voted together 
and supported the NRA. Now, remember, this is a First Amendment case, not a Second Amendment case. It had nothing to do with guns. It doesn't change the, as um, the arm scholar says, the Second Amendment landscape forever. It, it, it doesn't do any of that stuff. It's not doing that stuff. But it does give me a little bit more hope because there are three people that I really have to kind of stand up for in this. Okay, first off is they're going to be the NRA in this. So, so they actually fought this. Okay, I don't blame them, but you know the NRA really has not been doing the Second Amendment community any favors the past few years. Maybe they're going to turn things around now that Wayne Lapierre is gone and and some reformers have gotten in on the board. Who knows? Okay, but still, as far as I'm concerned, the NRA is persona non grata. In fact, they just had their big annual convention here in Dallas. I could have gone to it, and there was no way I was going to go to it. I just cannot support the NRA. I just cannot do it until they change. I'm not going to support them on the hope of them changing. They have to change. But to their credit, they fought this to the end. Okay. The second person that I really want to point out is Justice Sonia Sotomayor of the U.S. Supreme Court. She is one of the most liberal justices there. And she was able to, unlike the New York politicians, because we know that she does, she votes against gun rights all the time. She does not support gun rights in the least. But at least she was able to impartially separate her bias against guns and her disdain of gun owners and support a gun rights organization for their First Amendment rights. When the lower courts, I think it was the Second Circuit, couldn't do that. And, of course, the politicians in New York couldn't do that. And so I really want to point her out because she wrote the decision. It was a, it was a liberal justice that supported the NRA. So in gun rights. Well, as I said, First Amendment rights, but a Second Amendment organization. And so... The liberal justices could have taken this opportunity knowing it was still going to go through and, and write a dissent and try to give some type of legal precedent and foundation for people in other states that are anti-gun to go after pro-gun organizations and not let them exercise their freedom of, of speech. And they chose to do the right thing. And so for that, I have to give her credit. And then the last group... I want to give a shout out to is the um, what is it uh, the American Civil Liberties Union the ACLU because even though they say they support civil liberties and that's their whole goal when it comes to their record on the Second Amendment the ACLU has a statement saying that they believe the Second Amendment should be repealed and they are against firearms ownership and they're for all these gun laws and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of antithetical to their mission statement, but they don't think the Second Amendment should be uh, promoted. They don't think the Second Amendment should even be in the Constitution. However, they defended the NRA in this case before the Supreme Court because they understood it was a First Amendment issue. And so they also were able to set aside their bias against guns, gun owners and gun organizations, and successfully defended the NRA in front of the Supreme Court. So, you know, I think it's important that when people that we may disagree with do the right thing, I think it's important that we give them a shout out because this is how we can still come together at times and hopefully find common ground and in such a politically charged and bifurcated world, we can have a little bit of release of the pressure, you know, where things just aren't always mm, like that. And so I think it's important, you know, I'm sure we're going to disagree with Justice Sotomayor in the future, but when it comes to this, I think it's important that we say, hey, you did something right, thank you so much, you know, but everything that somebody does isn't just bad, you know, because look at what the left does when it comes to Donald Trump. Love him or hate him, and whether or not he does something good or does something bad, it doesn't matter if he would sacrifice himself to go run into a burning building to save puppies and children. They would still, the left and the media would still say how bad he was that he did it. Like, he didn't save enough kids, or the kids were the wrong colors, or he took too long saving them. How dare him? He's a Nazi! All, all that kind of stuff. 
uh, you, he just couldn't win. In, in it. But I think it's important that when our political um, enemies, <laughs> shall we say, do good things, it's important that we point it out. And I think it's our obligation. And so I want to thank the NRA for fighting it. I want to thank Justice Sotomayor for doing the right thing. And I want to thank the ACLU for actually defending the NRA. So I know it's a unlikely trio of, of, of organizations and people, but hey, the right thing happened in the end. And that gives me a little bit more faith in our justice system and the Supreme Court. So if they can set aside their political biases to do what's right, well, maybe there is hope for the future. So anyway, what do you guys think with my new purchase, my Beretta 80X? Uh, your thoughts on it? Should I have gotten something else? Trust me, no, nothing else there interested me. They did have an HK Mark 23 pistol in Flat Dark Earth, but I, I, I wasn't in, in, in the mood to spend that kind of money. I just wanted something uh, like this. So anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think, and let's talk about the word of the day. If you made it to the end of this video, the word of the day. Mm, I think the word of the day is going to be Thanks. Thanks. Because we need to thank Justice Sotomayor and the ACLU. They did the right thing. So thanks is the word of the day. Easy word to put into a comment. So I know you made it to the end. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.